So uh, this has all the makings of a very interesting conversation. So just to set the ball rolling, you know, uh, last evening when I was at the men's room, um, the place had posted stickers all over the place and some of the men who went uh, into the men's room today may have noticed it. Uh, it had posted stickers all over the place which said that Aadhaar is slavery. And, uh, you know, I thought it both amusing and painful because whoever may have put it out there, uh, I don't know what the intent was, that if the message was, uh, you know, that uh, if, if you're anti-Aadhaar, do you want me to piss on Aadhaar? Or, uh, or are you trying to suggest uh, something else altogether? Is this your way of registering a protest? If it is, then I'm not entirely sure if this may be the most appropriate way to register your protest. Be that as it may, uh, it was uh, both amusing and painful because I thought uh, this kind of reflects the nature of discourse in our country. Uh, there is no room for nuance, there is no room for dialogue, and uh, there is no room for middle ground. And that is why I also, t I also made my point clear and I articulated uh, uh, to Ravi Chandar that is other utopia or dystopia uh, that perhaps may be a bit misplaced as well. You know, that, that again is a very polarizing kind of a theme. Uh, you know, there is, uh, there is, is there room for middle ground? And that is what uh, we ought to be exploring. Uh, but unfortunately, that is where, that is where uh, all the conversations in our country seem to have degenerated into. And um, over the last two years that my colleague Ramnath and I have been uh, researching uh, this theme, I must uh, say, uh, that uh, in engaging with all of the stakeholders in the ecosystem, we haven't come across any bad guys, quote unquote, bad guys. Everybody has their heart in the right place. Their intent is good. Unfortunately, like Mr. Arun Mehra pointed out yesterday, people do not talk to each other. People refuse to engage with those who are unlike others. And uh, so, uh, so a lot of, lot many people asked me, where do I stand on this? And I, before I, before I ask my questions, before I set the ball rolling, I think I have to uh, place this on the table. Uh, at, and and I'm, I'm not, I don't want to sound biased about this, but I think that this is perhaps one of the most staggering accomplishments in contemporary history. Uh, and. Uh, much of the credit must go to the team that has implemented it. And uh, this is not to suggest that all is well with the project. There are multiple uh, issues that plague it. And there is much that has to be done about it. And if I can draw a metaphor, if I may use a metaphor, uh, when Henry Ford created a motor car, the question was, do you create a motor car first or do you, do you put the highway is in place first. What is it that you do first? Uh, now we can debate forever whether when you create a motor car, uh, is it, uh, do you have seat belts in it first? Do the rules come first? Do you have airbags in it? And so on and so forth. And that is what this debate to my mind seems to have degenerated about. And that is why uh, we have been engaged with the various stakeholders. Now, I want to open this conversation uh, by uh, starting with uh, Mr. Uh, Ramesh, uh, because uh, Mr. Jairam Ramesh uh, is a member of the parliament, a former member of the parliament, and uh, I have to place this on the record. You will forgive me, Mr. Ramesh, for this, um, uh, you know, in spite of uh, trying to reach out, we haven't been able to connect, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm delighted that you are there on this uh, uh, panel. And um, a question that is playing on my mind right now is that you are part of the machinery of the government. You were in the government when this mandate to roll out Aadhaar was provided and much of the hard work was done. And my understanding, bases some of the text messages that we exchanged, uh, and the pointers that you offered, was that where you stand, though, is that, uh, is, is, is that your voice is a very highly critical voice. And it pointed out uh, to 
voices which are extremely, extremely polarized voices. Uh, so where is it that you stand right now uh, as far as this project is concerned? On the one hand, your government had a certain stance when, when you were in government. And as an individual, where do you stand? And you'll have to pardon my ignorance here. Well, we are not in a TV debate, so I'm, yes, not, I'm not obligated to tell you where I actually stand. So, but let me let me say that um, I was part of the team that initially conceptualized Aadhaar, and actually I was the first person to start implementing Aadhaar in the Ministry of Rural Development. I think just let's rewind for one minute. What does Aadhaar do? It basically establishes your identity. And the problem in the delivery of social welfare programs was large scale fake or duplicate identities. What Aadhaar doesn't do is deal with inclusion errors or exclusion errors, which is those people who are not eligible who get benefits and those people who are, should be eligible who don't get benefits. That's not dealt with by the Aadhaar. What Aadhaar does is basically tell you who you are. Whether you're entitled to that benefit is not determined by Aadhaar. It's determined by you know some other government scheme. So the reason why I was excited by this whole adventure uh, in 2009 was that we were going to bring modern technology uh, to cut out a lot of waste in the delivery of social welfare programs, subsidies, direct benefits from government to people and so on and so forth. So that's how I came into Aadhaar until 2014. My conception of Aadhaar was that this is a technological tool, not the technological answer, it's a technological tool to help government cut out a lot of waste and duplication in government welfare programs. However, after 2014, the entire conception of Aadhaar has changed. And I find myself at a complete loss, uh, really, as to where we are headed. And I think the, we would be better off if we were to go back to what it originally was meant to be, establish that, deliver a good success uh, on that, and then move on to other things. So to me, uh, the answer to like where I stand, I believe that Aadhaar is an important instrument for reducing waste uh, and fraud in government delivery programs. That's the extent to which I am willing to commit myself. Anything more than that, I think is something that needs to be debated on a much larger scale. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, but uh, in our research, it did come up that in the in sometime in 2009 uh, was when uh, you uh, it is uh, that our research did indicate that while you were pro Aadhaar that you started out with a pro Aadhaar position sometime in 2009 uh, you were among those who kind of developed cold feet and wanted to delink Aadhaar uh, from the DBT program particularly the LPG. See, uh, would I, you want to put that into perspective? Why, is there, is there some merit that in because. that? And, uh, uh, and, and, and the second part of my question there is, and, and the second part of my question is, you are now, uh, uh, you, your, your criticisms now against the project uh, is that which, it, which leads to the extreme which is of an extremely polarizing nature, or rather, which re leads to people who are on the extremely polar side. Where does that stem from, really? See, when uh, we started in 2009, I was very clear in my mind that this is not going to be mandatory from day one. That this is an instrument, this is an enabling instrument, uh, but let's make a beginning, because in this country, we can keep on talking and identifying problems, but let's make a beginning. So we made a beginning. And in Andhra Pradesh, in Rajasthan, in Jharkhand, uh, I personally 
made a beginning on old age pensions, on rural employment programs, uh, on the delivery of various benefits from government schemes. Very soon it was obvious that instead of actually solving the problem, the forced introduction of Aadhaar was leading to exclusion errors, bad, bad connectivity, old people over the age of 60 not having, you know, reliable... I'm sorry, I'll have to interrupt you on that one, but you are, uh, you are an engineer yourself, and we know that that is in the very nature of biometrics itself, no, and, and those kind of exclusionary errors are par for course, and that is in the evolution of technology no, itself. No, it's not par for the course. You know, um, the, the exclusion errors that we saw, for example, uh, in the delivery of uh, food grains through the public distribution system in Rajasthan, uh, they were far greater than what we had expected. The Rajasthan experiment was a far smaller experiment. Yeah, because and of that experiment failed, if I'm not understood. I think the reason, the reason for that is, uh, to use a favorite word of all the techies, the ecosystem. You know, uh, there were different parts of the ecosystem uh, which had not been engineered properly. And I think that's the real issue now. Um, one part of Aadhaar is how do you make government programs more efficient? The other part of Aadhaar is, you know, do you need Aadhaar for mobile phones? Do you need Aadhaar for bank accounts? Do you need Aadhaar for flying? Uh, I mean, do you need Aadhaar for being born? There was a, there was a guideline that was issued uh, that you need Aadhaar for a death certificate. I mean, uh, there was a bizarre uh, guideline that was issued till a clarification came out. So that's a different Aadhaar. And I, I believe that the Aadhaar 1.0, which is the Aadhaar meant to remove fake and duplicate identities in government welfare programs is still relevant we should focus on that, we should make that uh, viable, we should eliminate all the other exclusion errors that are coming about and give confidence to the people that, you know, this is a solution uh, that has actually led to a better outcome rather than creating problems in the process. I, I completely buy that argument. I, 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 I have absolutely no issues with that argument and I, I, I completely on board that. And which is why I always turn to the wise counsel of Mr. Myra uh, because he has oftentimes tempered my exuberance. Each time I report to him with much exuberance and he asks me to calm down and he asks me to reason and uh, he asked and and uh, he has always uh, told me that have you onboarded the voices of everybody that matters the people who disagree with you and uh, you wrote a very fine essay on the democracy of technology um, now to your mind the kind of debate that is happening right now and the way the, this entire uh, narrative is being played out in, a, in our country around the Aadhaar program, is this the appropriate kind of debate that Thank is you being so force much. fed? And I think um, Mr. Ramesh made a point that... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm asking a question, you'll have to allow me. <laughs> Ooh, wow, wow. Yeah. Thank you. Um, with your permission, uh, <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Adhar, as originally conceived, as Jairam said, was a technical tool, a very sharp, new technical tool. And I think there's no question that in terms of technologies available to confirm that this person is indeed this person, no technology is perfect, but this is probably one of the best. It's able to say this person because of biometrics is most likely to be what this, who this person claims to be. It's a tool. Okay. Humanity develops many technologies and every time a new powerful technology gets developed, it is seen like the answer to almost every problem of the world. 
nuclear technology when discovered in the run up to the in, through the second world war was you know energy now from atoms we won't have to worry about energy anymore and soon we discovered that that technology could be used in other ways by other people and then the people who discovered the atom bomb i mean the not the atom bomb the nuclear technology oppenheimer wrote this fine essay he said i'm so dismayed that i had a role in the development of this technology i didn't anticipate what it might be used for okay and since then the world has been going on we're trying to present prevent the proliferation of the use of a very fine technology and i think aadhar is at that point it's a fine technology and we're talking about non proliferation of the use of aadhar other fine technologies gene technology it has a lot of potential to improve productivity but it can have side effects as all technologies may have and so those who resist the use of in crops gene technology and jairam ramesh had great roles in inviting people who had other views into those discourses and you had to walk out of some of those because there's yelling amongst people it was not possible to have a sensible discussion about how we could together use that technology in a way that would benefit us all and prevent the misuse of it there be damages that it might cause so technology is a tool technology can increase efficiency in various processes the people who are responsible for the outcomes of those processes the regulation of those processes they must be held accountable for how they are using this technology it's not the aadhar original team's fault it's everywhere else and so aadhar provides sharp identity the people in the banking system need a tool by which they can identify the person to whom the money is being given as in government schemes they want to know is this the real beneficiary if qualified is this the real beneficiary and you go to security certainly anyone who's responsible to manage our security would like to be able to say is this the person or not the person so there are many public uses and people responsible for public systems who could benefit if this tool was used by them in some sensible way now the discussion of regulation is not a technical discussion it is where values come fears come concerns come some exaggerated possibly from the perspective of the person who's listening but from the person who's feeling it it's not exaggerated it's a real fear it's go so the nature of this dialogue is very important and just to conclude i would say this is we are not the only countries worrying about social media internet technologies and other enables the use of that much more efficiently all over the world this has become a concern have we gone too far celebrating the internet and social media it has good uses and we've seen the positive side of internet and google and and and, and so on but we're seeing how it can be misused greatly misused and so they say the time has come to regulate the use of social media regulate we are saying the use of aadhar here how should this discourse take place in the forum 2000 which is a forum on where democracy is in the world today they asked this question and i was there and the thing was the technology of democracy and how can we have a democratic discussion about the use of technology and the conclusion was we can't do it on the internet because it's just polarized you cannot we have to sit down all time and listen to another person say what you fear why you fear what's your suggestion what do i fear the conduct of an old time dialogue a great conversation is necessary for determining what would be good uses of aadhar and in each of those uses what would be good regulations of it i'm afraid we are not having those discussions uh, sanjay before i come to you and as a corollary uh, to that question mr mera a question directed to the both of you um a data rich country is what we are looking at and which is the message that we are told starved for every other public resource is effectively the future that we are looking at theoretically what kind of lens ought we be looking at this future from what are the thoughts that come to your mind what are the implications of you know, it you uh, know just uh, before you get into that one response to what arun just said in 
a law was actually introduced in parliament to regulate Aadhaar. See, this is very important to understand. There is a certain history to this. In 2010, a bill was introduced in parliament to govern the use of Aadhaar. Now, what happened in 2010 was that it went for deliberations in the standing committee and it was rejected lock, stock and barrel. And in 2014, the guys who rejected it, lock, stock and barrel, accepted Aadhaar, barrel, stock and lock. <laughs> I mean, it's complete U-turn. Had the law been passed in 2010, much of the problems and grievances that people have, not all, but a substantial part of privacy, for example, would have got addressed. But we didn't do that. We embarked on Aadhaar. We didn't have the legal backing. We didn't have a law. That law, by the way, became a reality only in 2016. So, you know, you asked me uh, right in the beginning, where do I stand? You know, in parliamentary democracies, where you stand depends on where you sit. And the guys, and the guys who opposed Aadhaar in 2010 became the greatest champions of Aadhaar in 2014 and thereafter. And you know, there's an old uh, Urdu saying which translated into English, there is no zealot more zealous than a neo-convert, you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think, Jairam, you uh, put it so well. Our discussions are they're not even discussions. They break down into uh, real harangues about are you for it or are you against it? And that is it. You must take a position. You can't be saying I'm exploring it. No, no, you've got to be for it or you're against it. And so in that atmosphere, we cannot explore issues which are pretty complex like this one, uh, this one, this one is. So as you were asking about uh, uh, the right to one's own identity, but this goes to a larger philosophical issue which is going on in humanity. The utilitarian view that if something is good for the majority and if a few suffer, it's okay because the majority benefits. That's the utilitarian philosophy in economics in one view and go. The other view which has been coming up and growing strongly is about every individual has a right and you cannot sacrifice even one individual for the sake of the benefit of the majority. So here we are and technology unfortunately, it's like a calculative business as economics sometimes gets to, says well I can prove to you that through Aadhaar the efficiency of so many things will be improved. But we are saying is some poor person will suffer. My mother, she's 97. She got a notice to say that her bank account cannot be operated because she is not registered with Aadhaar. So my brother took her over to have a registered for Aadhaar in some center in Delhi where she had to wait an hour and a half for the officer to show up. And then he, well, because she was 97 in a wheelchair, he was, she was the first. It took him 15, 20 minutes, her old gnarled fingers to put down. They could not get a trace. Now what does he do? So, of course, finally said, Mataji, you know, I'm going to say it's okay. Of course, what does it say? So, yes, we have to say that, are we concerned about not causing an accidental uh, deprivation of benefit or a hurt to anybody? Hmm? Or it doesn't matter. And so, sometimes, if I might say, you know, defenders of, of technology in various fields, and Aadhaar too say, but look at the efficiencies, look at how much money is getting saved. But the people talking on the other side are not talking through the utilitarian lens. They're saying about the rights of people and everybody has a right to themselves. Sanjay, may I uh, ask you to uh, add your uh, uh, thing here because there are two things here. Uh, one is the consent architecture, which is not there in any other part of the world. And second, the uh, Supreme Court uh, weighing in on the fundamental right to privacy, which again is a significant ruling. Yeah, so actually I want to also first address, you know, what I heard from the other panelists. And the fact is that technology can be very flexible. And in fact, when we were, I was the chief product manager of Aadhaar and we were given the mandate to build it. One of the requirements was that nobody should be excluded if their biometrics cannot be captured. 
So obviously a process was put in place uh, through which your mother went through, where if the biometrics couldn't be captured, you did get an Aadhaar. Uh, that very feature was then of course misused in the field for some folks to get this thing and that led to a lot of criticism, which you know, as you're very familiar with officials, immediately means suddenly anybody using those exceptions to provide public good get clamped down upon. And this is sort of the give and take of this public discourse sometimes actually has the wrong effect when you stand up and have this really polarized debate where some good feature that was provided for the benefit of people will suddenly get shut down. Now, that is one thing that happened. The second was that when you use Aadhaar in a scheme, one of the mandates was that you will provide an alternative for those who are unable to, because you know in biometrics, the criteria for selection of biometric sensors is that 98% success rate, which means a 2% failure rate. Right? And this is a fact that, so if you are using this for distribution of food supplies, you have to provide an alternative for those 2%. And yet what happens is that in the scheme of things, the UIDA is not the one responsible for setting up the food delivery system. It is in the government department. Typically it is outsourced by that government department to somebody else. So things get lost in translation from the source to the other end. And of course, you're always playing this game of catch up. Uh, UIDI is all of maybe 30, 40 officials uh, the, when I was around. Today it's probably around 100. And you can't have 100 officials running systems in the entire country. That's not the way we are set up. We really need a lot more state capacity to be able to take these schemes and implement them well. And of course, it's very easy to point and saying like, look, you should have known better. Before state capacity, why the hell did you build this thing? And Really, we have been you know, independent for so long. Why is the state capacity not there is also a good question to ask. Now, but to come to the other thing is that this is really a part of a global discussion on technology, on data, on privacy. And I actually believe that because of the debate we've been having, however polarizing over the last seven or eight years, we've actually been ahead of the game. Uh, around the fact that data must be used to empower and not to actually sell to people. Uh, I think the awareness in the system has been there. Uh, we have the Supreme Court judgment on privacy uh, th that was just a few months ago. But interestingly, because of this conversation that's been happening, the government had already appointed a committee, uh, the Justice Sri Krishna Committee on Data Protection, which was done earlier. In parallel, in some of the work that we have been doing, I've been now out of Aadhaar for five years, but we have been working on elements on how to use data to empower people. And we also concluded our work around the same month we actually published what we believe is the way where data, people should own their own data and how that should be used for their benefit. And the same conversation we've seen with regulators in India, we have seen this with regulators around the world, the, in Europe, GDPR, in uh, UK, the open banking, we've seen the Italian regulators, we've seen the Japanese regulators, all come around to the same conversation. This is a global conversation. It's not just India and Aadhaar. It's not just identity. It's about how people will use their data to benefit themselves. And I'm actually, you know, because of all of what we're going through, I think we have come up to this great place where we do expect to see those things become a part of our legal system, become part of how uh, we live our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm actually very positive that, you know, we've come through this entire process and we will get hopefully better state capacity, we'll hopefully get uh, better laws, we'll get this conversation which will take us ahead in the forefront of, uh, I mean, there's probably only two or three other countries in the world which have privacy as a fundamental right. And we are there now and we'll be taking that as the basis to move ahead. And so technology per se, um, particularly today's technology is actually very flexible. So it does have the capability to say that if this is a situation, then please follow some other path to get to the end that you want to. So the framing of the conversation around what we want to deliver, how we want to deliver it, where we want to use this technology to get uniqueness, and where we want to use it to uh, do something else, to authenticate people, I think we'll have to just go through those uh, pieces till the state becomes much more uh, or even the, not the state, it is businesses, everybody becomes more efficient at using this thing for the right purpose. I actually don't believe it is an issue of purpose. I think it comes down to our capacity to execute and manage large complex systems across the country. So that's...
Uh, Mr. Ramesh, a question to you. You made a very interesting point that uh, when you are in public office, you wear the hat of the ministry that you are in. Now, this is a voice that has uh, come from your colleagues uh, as well um, in the past uh, who have opposed uh, the project at certain point and have uh, moved over at other points and much like what we're witnessing now. Uh, how easy or how difficult is it now that you are in the opposition? Uh, are you opposing it because you are in the opposition? What kind of a trajectory does it take? I think I think the opposition, to be fair, to be fair, the opposition to Aadhaar is coming on two grounds. The first ground is that it is leading to larger exclusion than we had originally anticipated, and second, that it is being expanded to large number of areas without consultation, without prior notification, without consent. I think this is where the opposition is coming from. I think one other point that I'd like to make in, in response to what you said, I think, I mean, uh, we are all from the world of technology at some point of time. So I don't think that, you know, we are anti-technology per se, but I think it's very important not to oversell what technology can do. Yeah, you, I've been reading in the newspapers that, you know, billions of dollars have been saved in government programs because of Aadhaar. I mean, this is crap because, you know, the, the CAG, and I, they don't take my word for it, take the CAG's word for it because it's the CAG who is the gospel. It's the CAG who told us 2G was a scam. It's the CAG who told us the coal distribution was a scam. So the same CAG has said that the savings being claimed from the use of Aadhaar in the savings of LPG subsidy is completely wrong. Because what has happened in the last three years is oil prices have fallen dramatically. So if oil prices have fallen, your subsidy bill is obviously going to fall. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot of these number games being played to oversell and overinflate what you can do. So we should, in my view, in the initial stages at least, not oversell, not overmarket. But I think we should be a little more... A little humility on the part of techies will not hurt the techie cause, you know. It will not hurt them. I think uh, Mr. Ramesh deserves an applause for that. It will not hurt them. Uh, you know, uh, um, uh, Arun mentioned gene splicing. My mind goes back uh, 10 years ago. We had a big debate in this country. We're still having that debate on whether we should have genetically modified crops or not. Uh, a huge debate uh, and unfortunately I happen to be in the center of that controversy and I said now this is a polarized debate how do I take a decision so I you know did what Arun uh, was talking about you know opened up the debate uh, went to about eight cities of India talked to about 10,000 people in in uh, in meetings like this farmers scientists NGOs activists one of them was in Bangalore in Bangalore convent uh, in the Bangalore meeting I was accused by many NGOs of being an agent of Monsanto uh, you know all this happened but at the end the decision that we took, which is a decision that I think has relevance for Aadhaar, is that in genetically modified technology, the Americans have followed a permissive approach, the Europeans have followed a prohibitive approach, but India, like from the days of Buddha, we should go the middle path, we should take the precautionary approach. That's what we did in genetically modified crops, and that's what we should be doing in Aadhaar as well. In not 100% promiscuity, like we have in the case of Aadhaar, not 100% self-abnegation, which is being recommended by many civil society activists, but some middle precautionary approach, which brings a sense of priorities into what Aadhaar is doing. And I don't think the debate is on the technological accomplishment. That's not the debate. We all acknowledge the technological accomplishment. We are now debating the social consequences of introducing this revolutionary technology. And that's the bigger debate. Uh.
Before we uh, take questions from the audience, uh, Mr. Ramesh made a very pertinent point on humility from technologists. And Sanjay, since you were part of the UIDI team, and uh, you know, I've had the chance of engaging with all of you very deeply, would you like to put your perspective, would you like to add your perspective on that? What was your philosophy on that very quickly before we ask the audience for, uh, take questions from the audience? Actually, it looks like you're all on the same page. Uh, but yeah, because you know, I have always believed that the law needs to define and policy with it the boundaries on how technology has to be used in the field. And that's exactly what I heard here today. And that's something which you've always wanted to do. We wanted the parliament to take the leadership, pass the bill, allow, create the regulations. And for various reasons, that didn't happen. And even today, it is taking uh, you know, its own path on that. But the point is that a system has been set up in a way that you do one thing, but then other departments take their own decisions. So it's really not for the UIDI to tell the food and civil supplies department in any particular state that thou shall not use Aadhaar in a particular way. And as a result, it's not really the arrogance of the techies, but really coming back to the policy and the uh, political uh, uh, climate in terms of what gets done, what doesn't get done. Uh, in terms of the Supreme Court debate, everybody assumed that since I was the chief product manager of the UID, you know, I would be anti-privacy. And that there was this newspaper article where somebody came to me and said, would you, you know, we, this case is going on Supreme Court, we want to have two articles, one pro-privacy, one anti-privacy, and would you write one? And I told him, look, I want privacy as much as the next guy, right? And, you know, and actually nobody wrote against privacy, just so you know. And that uh, they actually dropped that. Uh, but the fact is that people have these prejudged notions of where you stand. And the fact is that's not really how it actually is. And uh, I actually think this privacy judgment was awesome. It actually had so many aspects that they covered that I would probably be the wrong person to have written on privacy anyway because many of the factors that were being considered in the judgment had nothing to do with Aadha, they had nothing to do with technology. It was really about how we as a society want to engage with the state. And there are really some beautiful passages in there, but I will, in the interest of time, not read them out. Yeah, so so can we have the mic uh, uh, around, please? Uh, uh, Subodh, uh, where are the volunteers? Can we... Um Okay, we can see a few hands here. Okay, so uh, can we have the mic uh, starting here? And we'll come, we'll move behind. Yes, ma'am, we'll come to you. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Ramesh said the law which was referred to the committee didn't get passed in 2010. But don't you think the cardinal sin was, even with the law being in place, you knew the law was not in place, but you still went ahead and rolled out the scheme. Correct? Was the, should you not accept that? The scheme was rolled out in 54 districts. The scheme was rolled out, if I may say so, in an experimental way. It was not universalized. It was rolled out in four or five major big ticket programs, scholarships, my own rural employment, old age pensions. So it was on a small scale. DBT, direct benefit transfer, from 2011 to 2014 was on a small scale. Uh, I was very conscious of the fact that we didn't have a law. We didn't have a law. Uh, and that was, you know, a, a, a serious lacuna. Uh, the, the committee, the Standing Committee on Finance, uh, which was chaired incidentally by the strongest critic of the present government, Mr. Yashwan Sinha, uh, completely uh, rejected the draft bill. And uh, the question was, do we go ahead without a bill or do we wait for a bill to come? The position that I took was, let's go ahead, but go ahead in a small way and not in a universal way. And that's how we started with 50 districts, increased to 100 districts, increased to 200 districts and so on and so forth. So that's that's the strategy we adopt. Yes, sir. Uh, you um, okay? Well, yes. I must congratulate Mr. Ramesh for an excellent analysis and conclusion and suggestion. The last point you said the Buddha approach that is necessary for India. When I look at the 97-year-old woman's problem in this relationship, then I have a question: 
is the passport of india for a citizen of india more important than aadhar or not and if the election commission has given you an identification card is that not enough to replace aadhar why am i still secluded i have both of these when i wanted to go to pakistan so can you no, yeah, just tell your question i please. said if they don't allow me i will enter because i don't believe in the border and i got to pakistan because pakistan government announced the visa for me by radio pakistan we have to civilize ourselves i am very happy that you have put it very clear thank See, you sir the, the reason why aadhar is preferred to passports or electronic voter cards there's only one reason why and that's the biometric in the aadhar it's the biometrics that give you the unique identity there have been fake passports there have been fake voter cards and it's not beyond indian ingenuity to have fake aadhars also i'm sure at some stage there will be fake aadhars however the reason i think we should understand why aadhar is preferred as a mode of establishing your unique identity is the biometrics now it's it happened to my mother my mother was 90 years old she had the same experience as her own's mother but uh, you know uh, these are these are these are huge issues but the biometrics gives the uniqueness to aadhar and we shouldn't lose that because there is a certain advantage to having biometrics yeah so uh, uh can we have the mic uh, around please um can i ask can i ask the questions oh okay i thought there was a mic here with uh, mahesh here okay okay ma'am uh my question is regarding the aadhar card and the subsidies uh especially the subsidy on gas connections uh aadhar card i've been trying and based on my experience Five years to more than that, I've been trying for my Aadhaar card. Ultimately, I got one, but in the meantime, I was not getting the subsidy for almost six months. First two or three months I got, but after that it just stopped, and I was not aware that it was being linked with the Aadhaar card. So finally, I got my Aadhaar card, and now I have linked it. Will and can I get the subsidy done? How? and this won't be only my experience i'm sure uh okay uh, that will well, one be... impact of your your not getting the subsidy is that we can claim that our subsidy bill has gone down dramatically uh, i will not permit that answer Adhan. i'm not going to permit that answer i think uh, no that that's not a fair answer i think we can come back mahesh you are a so jaram um we all citizens your law lawmakers we are all citizens would every day a threatening message comes to us to you know, link aadhar with uh, my bank account and uh, my pan account and whatever you call it what is your advice you are the lawmaker tell us whether we should link it or not my advice is do it and fight it you know this you cannot yes, override what a law is and if the law has been made that in income tax your income tax your pan number must be linked to your aadhar number i hated it i fought for it against it in parliament but i went out and i linked my pan card to my aadhar card okay so the, you know let's understand the limitations under which we are we are a law abiding society we have laws so if parliament passes a law and parliament has passed a law that pan must be linked with aadhar number and many other things so i think what we should do is we should we cannot opt out but at the same time i think we should walk on two legs you know as i said that's the only advice i can give you Thank okay you. there's uh, we have time to take only one last Sometimes. question and subodh is indicating to me that mr ramesh is going to be uh, around uh, he has one more session so uh, you can follow him uh right there yes sir so sometimes the worry about security is not that the government will somehow uh, you know uh, impin security of individuals but more than you know hackers and in international groups might uh, you know get your data now nandan nilakani listen recently said and very rightly that the ownership of the data should lie entirely with the individual 
and they should be able to control where it goes, how it will be shared, so that. But the moment it goes to the individual, you know, you don't know about security, whether it will be bulletproof. So, Sanjay, I mean, how is the security set up in, in either of these cases? So, in terms of uh, this particular question that you asked, the fact is that we all believe that the data belongs to you. It may or may not be in your control. For example, there is data about you with Aadhaar, with your bank, with your telecom provider, with the landlord, with the land registration and so on. But that they have a fiduciary responsibility to keep it safe for you. So if ever there is a breach and we want the law to go there, uh, you, they should be held liable for that breach to happen, uh, to, you know, to recompense you and so on. Uh, the second part is that anybody who has your data should be subject to audits regarding how they're keeping it securely and that this audit should be done in a way that would uh, make sure that your data is actually being kept safe. And the third, of course, is that where it is not required, you shouldn't have to give your data. I mean, when I walk into a building security, I put in my name and phone number. Uh, yes, they should validate my ID. Should they record it forever? I don't know. And so that question has to be asked by them because they now have a liability. They have to keep that information safe. No. Uh, that is going to happen. Unfortunately, that is the world we live in. But the Equifax has to be held liable for that breach. That's the and for any losses that may be suffered due to that. Okay. So that's really what the thinking. Okay, Mr. Ramesh wants to add a word here. Before we end, in a spirit of democracy that Arun Maira talked about, can I ask two questions of the audience? Please, please. Okay. First question I want to ask you is. How many of you think that Aadhaar is a good idea? 60%, 65%. How many of you think that Aadhaar is a good idea but being implemented in a scary manner? 80%. <laughs> Uh, we didn't. Uh, that's a that's a that's a very uh, I mean, that's, that's a that's, that's, I think that pretty much sums it up. That sums and, up uh, that that that's uh, that's very well put. And uh, I don't think there is any dissonance on that. Uh, there is much to think about. Uh, thank you for being such a lovely panel, and thank you for being a great audience and turning up in such great numbers.